Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of What Mark Spins, my vinyl collection series. Today I'm going to be doing a little bit of a shorter episode, this time on the eyes in my record collection. Fair I go a little alphabetically with the one eye shirt I have in my uh, band shirt collection. And yes, I know this band's from the UK, there's some weird stuff going on over there I don't want to get into. I, I don't know where they stand on the issue, if they've taken some controversial stance and this triggers you in some way. Do not let me know in the comments, I really don't care. We have enough crap going on over here. Moving on. Anyway, the first record I'm going to be talking about is I Am Dynamite's Wasa Tusa. Uh, these guys are a rock duo. They put out an album a few years ago that I still love to this day called Super Mega Fantastic. Uh, I have that on CD, not on vinyl. I'm not going to be talking about that here, but it's one of those great like garage rock duo type records. It's raw, it's infectious, and I highly recommend checking it out. Uh, this is not that. Uh, this is the follow-up to that. It came out last year, and I kind of regret not mentioning it in the channel in some way, because I do think this is a really solid record. I actually uh, pledged uh, money to them on, I believe it was Indiegogo, to get this record. This is definitely one of the biggest, like, first to second album departures I've ever seen. Whereas the first album was very, like, bare bones, garage rock, and still had a lot of hooks, uh, this puts a lot more emphasis on the hook side of things. If I had to compare it to anyone, it'd probably be, like, Hollow Notes, The Police, maybe a hint of Duran Duran in some of the more dancey moments. It's a short, tight, uh, poppy rock record that I'm sure alienated some people, which is a pretty bold thing to do since these guys aren't extremely well known. Though, you know, they they were kind of in the undercard of X-Fest a few years ago. Standout moments to me are uh, Be There, My Love, uh, Bloom is like where things get a lot more noisy and heavy. I think that's the song that fans of the first album would like the most. The two guys in the band also have some really Really great harmonies that come across on most of these songs and I'm not gonna say too much more because honestly I'm kind of hoping that I can get them on the podcast sometime I tried getting an interview with them last year when I was doing actual you know video interviews but it just didn't really pan out so if you guys are watching this doors wide open just saying okay so context for this next one uh, there was a sale at the local record store lose a couple years ago on 12 inch hip-hop singles that was like three for a dollar this is the first one of these alphabetically um, it's Ice-T, and, uh, there's three songs on this, so the title one, Exodus. Uh, from what I gather, this is from the mid-90s on what's not really one of his more talked-about albums, but I still think the three songs in this are, uh, pretty good. I haven't really gotten as much into classic hip-hop as you, as I'd like to, as you can see from here. They don't really sell, like, full, vintage, uh, classic hip-hop albums like they do with rock or pop music, which sucks, but, you know, I guess the old-school hip-hop fans are keeping in the vinyl, which makes sense for that genre, I suppose. I will say, this isn't one of those 12-inch singles that's just, like, putting one song on each side and selling it for twice the price of a 7-inch. Uh, there's a lot of, like, acapella cuts, uh, instrumentals, uh, and there's three different songs. There's, like, three different versions of three different songs here. The one song in here I kind of see myself coming back to the most is, uh, Always Wanted to Be a Ho, which is just so ridiculous. I always wanted to be a ho. I always wanted to be a ho. Not too much to say here. I'm not sure how qualified I am to talk about Ice T since this is these are literally the only songs of his I can name off the top of my head, honestly. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. This is this is pretty solid from my point of view. And the last two records here, um, if you've seen an episode of Mad Sounds from a while back, uh, you'll remember me talking with Johnny about the ridiculous number of lineup changes that this band's had. Iron Butterfly, first record here, Inagata De Vita. Of course, this is the album that has the psychedelic rock classic, which takes up the entire uh, side two of this. Of course, that 17 monster minute monster of a song that somehow they made into a three minute radio edit, which is ridiculous, but somehow they did it. There are a few decent songs on side one. Uh, are You Happy and Most Anything You Want are probably the two most memorable, but I'd be lying if I said they are much more than just build up to that title track. Oh, and luckily, uh, both these albums have the distinction of actually having the same lineup, which I'm not sure is the case for any of their other stuff. And the other record here is the follow-up to Inagata De Vida of Ball, which has kind of a weird packaging. It, like, the record goes in this side of it, and then this is just like a, a, like a thick page, basically, opening up to that. Also, the, the, title, the track list is wrong. I drew these Sharpie lines so that when I play in the future, because it goes from these three songs on the top to these two songs on the bottom, 
and then these two songs and these two songs. I'm not sure how, how interesting this is. I might cut some of it out. Well, it doesn't really have that ultimate high that's in Gata De Vida, uh, uh, both literal and figurative in the case of that era. I'd still say this is more consistent all the way through, even if I'm not sure many of the songs go over the four or five minute mark. Uh, the two standouts are the two singles that came out from this, uh, In the Time of Our Lives and The Soul Experience, um, which uh, not a must-listen album in my opinion, but if you're looking to get into uh, good old San Diego psych rock, see them rep the scene, if you will, then Iron Butterfly. We're checking out. And I would say live too, but like I said in that Mad Sounds, they have literally no original members left, so prepare for a tribute band. A really good tribute band, but still, like, totally devoid of any kind of integrity. Um, still good though. And that'll wrap things up for this episode of What Mark Spins. I hope you guys like the little recommendations I had here. Um, I'll leave songs from each of these in the description down there so you can check that stuff out. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye.